agree. I don't think the conversations regarding gentrification have intensified recently. It's definitely something that we're, we're having discussions about and trying to figure out how we can best get the, the community involved. It's a certified oh, hood classic. Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sadia, aka K Sadia. Today's video is a work week in my life. Yeah! I've been wanting to film this for a long time and finally got a chance to take some footage over the last like week and a half and put it together in this video. I'm not gonna lie, most of the time I'm here in my apartment doing meetings, doing presentations via Zoom, but I tried to get some footage of myself at the office. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. So I trained as an urban planner. Right now I work as a community development professional for a nonprofit. I work as a commercial corridor manager. And for those of you who are not familiar with that role, commercial corridor manager, because it's not super common, here is the basic job description. The role of commercial corridor management is aimed at improving the streetscape of commercial areas by implementing ideas for programs, services, physical improvements, and site activations that focus on placemaking and community building strategies. So as commercial corridor manager, I'm responsible for outreach and organization of merchants and creating ideas for programs and physical projects to improve and enhance the pedestrian experience on the corridor and I work on a specific corridor in West Philly. Outside of that I provide like t technical assistance for small business owners, connection to grants and other resources from the city, also like coordinate business support, marketing and outreach for corridor businesses, also business attraction, do some stuff with real estate, rehab, public spaces. It's just like a hodgepodge of different things. And also just a disclaimer because I am fasting so for Ramadan. So when I filmed all of these clips, I was fasting, so my energy is a little bit lower than normal. So yeah, and that's why I seem a little dry. I was actually editing this video and I was like, wait, I don't have an intro, let me do an intro. So here's the intro. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. Today I'm actually working on a really exciting project in partnership with an organization called Rebuilding Together Philadelphia. So over the past few months, my colleague has been collaborating with this organization to provide West Philly residents with free home renovations. So there's been a handful of West Philly residents on a specific block that have received free home renovations. Like, that's mind boggling to me. You know, some people got whole new kitchens, got roof work done, and a bunch of other cool stuff. So today is the, the culmination event to celebrate all of the work that's been done over the past few months. I'm actually going as a volunteer, so I'll get to help out with some of the smaller projects today, like painting, gardening, hopefully get a chance to talk to some of the residents who were able to get these free home repairs, and some of my colleagues who can provide some more information about this project that they've been working on. So, yeah, it's really early right now. It's 7-11. I'm actually supposed to be at the work site already, so I need to head out. I'm dressed a little more casually than normal today just because we're going to be outside, volunteering, probably doing heavy lifting, so I didn't want to wear like a formal outfit. Just wearing my uh, work hoodie and a Nike hijab. Rebuilding Together Philadelphia revitalizes communities by transforming vulnerable, owner-occupied houses into safe, healthy, and energy-efficient homes. Today we're doing, it's a culminating event of the Block Bill. It's a partnership between Rebuilding Together and about a few times a year, Rebuilding Together. They go into different neighborhoods and they provide free home repairs to uh, deserving homeowners. And for spring of 2021, facilitated the Dunlap repair. And we're here today in a culminating event, a half day to really just paint houses, install some exterior lights and painter, planter boxes, really just to celebrate what all transpired and to breathe life into this neighborhood. We've each been assigned different roles within the block build. So I actually got assigned to the solar panels team and I'll be working alongside some other volunteers. I got uh, getting uh, beautification out front with uh, some flower pots and flowers and on the inside smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. We got a, a beautiful back 
sliding door. I think it's a very good program, very helpful to people, especially low-income people. I'm, I'm happy and I'm satisfied with the work that they do. So this is the, the renovations? Yeah. They just did like the floors again. Getting the backsplash put all back around here. Thank you to the homeowners, to the community here, to the people who still come out of their homes and clean up, who allowed us to come into their homes to help them. So I just got back home after doing the Rebuilding Together project this morning. We got out there at around 7.30 and I left a little after one o'clock. It was more than I was actually expecting. You know, I was like, oh, I'll just come out, do some stuff for our social media, but they actually put me right to work. I was in a group that was doing uh, solar lighting on the exterior of a few homes on this specific block in West Philly. So they paired me with three other volunteers and then two experts who are volunteers from Rebuilding Together Philadelphia. They were our team leads. One of them was a licensed contractor the other was an electrician. It was an all-women team which is really cool because I've never met a woman contractor before so that was really interesting. We were calling it like the she build team. That was my first experience even holding a power tool. I've never done any type of construction. I don't even know if that really is considered construction. We had to climb up these ladders and basically drill holes and put in these like small solar panels and lighting. It was basically for anyone who had requested this specific service, but there were teams doing all types of projects. Some of my coworkers were doing plancher boxes. Other people were repainting railings. It wasn't too much interior renovations being done just because of COVID-19, they tried to keep us outside as much as possible. It was, it was pretty strenuous work. I had to get up on these high ladders. The ladder was, ladder was really wobbly. My team was really helpful, so I'm grateful for the experience. I feel a lot more comfortable now. Like if there was ever a need for me to get a little toolbox at home and at least I know I can put up light fixtures now and like drill things, screw things in. Shout out to Rebuilding Together Philadelphia. Shout out to the block build team. Really happy that I was able to participate. Shout out to my coworker who put the whole event together in partnership with Rebuilding Together. Now I'm back at home. Typically on Fridays, we have staff meetings at 2 p.m. But because we were all together basically all morning, our staff meeting today has been canceled. So I have a couple admin things that I wanna finish up. And then I'm actually gonna clock out of work because I clocked in this morning at like 6.30. Because it is COVID, most people are still working from home, but for my job in particular, I'm in the office normally twice a week and then work the other three days from home. Hello. Ooh, this is really close up. Good morning. <laughs> I feel so disoriented. I'm fasting. Ramadan just started yesterday. I have a lot of work stuff that I'm doing today and my brain is just not, my brain feels like mush right now. Like I feel like a parched plant. So yeah, there's that. But I wanted to continue with the work week in my life. I started on a Friday with that construction project because that's like not a typical day in my work week. Typically I'm at home doing Zoom meetings from my little table or from my chair over here as you can see i had two back-to-back -back zoom meetings this morning and they overlapped too so i didn't really have a chance for a break it's now 11 16 i have another meeting at 12. the other two i didn't really have to talk it was just there for me to like gather information but this meeting i have to actually speak it's a one-on-one -on -one meeting with myself and my mentor i did a corridor management training a few weeks ago and they assigned me a mentor which has been really cool a lot of people don't really know exactly what corridor management is so it's like helpful to have a mentor who's had previous experience in the field i'm gonna be meeting with him at 12 and then after that i have a break for about two to three hours and then i have another meeting at four to wrap up the day so a lot of meetings typically this is what my workday looks like it's like a lot of sitting in meetings when i'm not in zoom meetings i'm you know talking to businesses out on the corridor doing more in-person stuff right now i don't really mind being at home be just because now i'm fasting so i have less energy to be out walking and talking and you know fasting breath is a real thing shout out to these masks they help Because we're actually working with a printmaking business so she had like some mentorship from somebody at urban outfitters but she's actually going to be the one producing the bags so they were just waiting to hear it like back on the timeline from her and then they're like a design team to provide like some marketing 
guidelines. Have you guys done like that, um, what do they call it again? It's like a, a way to kind of like Google verify the business on the quarter. Oh, yeah. The other thing is, do you have any way to close off the street and do like socially distant programming? <laughs> Three hours later. I'm sure you're on edge. You want to know what's going on. So just to let you know, we have been planning for several months now. Um, based on the uh, verdict, we're not only dealing with the uh, Chauvin trial now. Now we're dealing with Dante Wright incident where he was shot and killed by police in Minnesota. I look a little more human now. And now I'm going to go walk to Starbucks and get a drink for when I break my fast. Because I just really want a white mocha. And I also need to get outside and get some steps in because I haven't left my apartment at all. I'm gonna go outside and get a little walk in. And then I'll come back and get some stuff set up for dinner. Then I have another meeting at seven o'clock. Hello, hello, hello. Why is it not focusing? Today I actually have to go to the office. I have office hours for three hours. And that's just like in case any clients, business owners come in, they need assistance with something. I'm doing a presentation with the, basically with the state. Some of my funding or the funding for corridor management is through the state. So every year we have like these annual reports, like annual presentations that we give, just an update on our work or every other year actually. So this will be the first time that I actually have to present to the state. So that's on Friday. I have to help with the presentation for that. Today is just gonna be like a typical day of me in the office. It's not really too exciting, but I figured why not film it so you guys can get like an accurate depiction of what actually, what other components of my job besides me building houses, which is not so typical and taking Zoom meetings from my bed, which is kind of typical. Normally it's from my desk, but I just was out of it that day. So. This morning I went into the office. I had a meeting. I was there for about three hours. A few clients came in. I actually got a phone call from a business owner. I think I talked about this already in this vlog, but this is the week we're currently awaiting the verdict of the Derek Chauvin, 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 I don't know, trial. A lot of the business owners are like waiting with bated breath just because they were so heavily impacted. When George Floyd was murdered, a lot of those businesses were looted. So they're really concerned about what the, the aftermath of this verdict will be. Because either good or bad, we could see another round of civil unrest on the corridor. So you know, one woman, she called me and she was just like, she already she said she already closed her business down and this planned to be closed for the week. She closed the business down fully and then also moved her inventory out just because she was so nervous about being impacted again. And her business was actually burned down during the last instance of civil unrest so i completely understand where she's coming from but yeah it's kind of a not a scary time and i had to send out some messaging today just about how business owners can be proactive in preparing in the case of civil unrest but i didn't want to word it in a way that would make them fearful because i don't want them to to be scared you know what i mean it's like we've dealt with this before if it happens again we can deal with it again but I do want them to be proactive in the sense of like, make sure your security gates are functioning, make sure all your inventory is like away from windows and stuff like that. I didn't want them to seem like I'm afraid. Cause I mean, I'm not afraid, you know, like if it happens, it happens, but you know, we'll hope that it doesn't happen and hopefully justice will be served in this case in some way. So that was my morning. I spent a lot of time just doing admin stuff, responding to emails, preparing for some upcoming meetings. And now I'm back at home so i think the rest of the day will pretty much be the same i have some more like research and preparation that i want to do for a meeting tomorrow i have a random burst of energy right now so i want to make sure i take advantage of this because most of the week and most of the time when i'm fasting i feel like a zombie so
Hello, good morning. I have to do a presentation for the state to talk about our neighborhood development work. I'm a little bit nervous. It's happening via Zoom, obviously, because we're still in a panoramic. The thing about virtual presentations is like, I can be reading straight from my notes and nobody can prove it because they're not in front of me. I think it'll go well. It should be pretty straightforward. 8.52, so in a couple minutes, I'll sit down and walk on. Hi everyone, my name is Sadia. I'm the commercial corridor manager. My favorite candy bar, I would say Cadbury, just a plain milk chocolate, it's pretty good. So today we're just gonna provide an overview of our challenges, successes, and future plans in relation to forest service areas. So we're gonna be talking about business support, promotion and engagement, rehab and real estate development, and cleaning, greening, and public space. So we're working on a streetscape and aesthetic improvements in order to make the corridor safer and more easily accessible for both residents and visitors. In order to mitigate some of these challenges, back in June, we initiated a relief fund to support businesses that experienced property damage and inventory losses during the civil unrest and were able to raise over $150,000 in donations. Beyond our own grant making, we have also connected businesses to other sources of capital, which resulted in over $700,000 total in relief funds. <laughs> in the future, uh, we would like to enhance our capacity for grant making and provide specialized technical assistance through group workshops and one-on-one -on -one consulting. There are also some community concerns regarding gentrification, uh, which are presented whenever targeted investment is discussed. So we continue to think through ways that we can promote as a diverse business hub, advocate for and or provide investment and structural improvements without causing community members to feel alienated or threatened by these processes. In the last year, probably <laughs> increased your output by 100%. I mean, <laughs> people's lives were changed. I just like to you know, commend everyone who's been involved in this. The presentation is done. I'm very happy, very pleased. I think it went well. We've done a lot, you know, and even when I was like reviewing for that presentation, I was thinking like, wow, okay, you did something, sis, you did something. You really did something. Anyway, there's still a lot more work to be done, a lot more improvement projects and things that I personally want to work on. In regard to today, I think I'm going to end the vlog here because it's already quite long and I think you've been able to see a couple of different aspects of what it is that I do for work um, outside of like client interactions, but those, you know, I don't want to put people on camera when they're not comfortable, so I didn't really share any of that. I can't even laugh. This is so tight on my face. Today is my 27th birthday. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. I'm grateful to be here. 26 was a heavy hitter. So much happened while I was 26. I feel like I went through several different metamorphoses during my 26th year. Lots of highs and lows. I was in a car accident. I feel like my body has like been different ever since then. I got my heart broken, which sucked. 1010 would not recommend. But on the bright side, I moved into my new apartment, achieved some really cool things in my job, started cultivating new hobbies, and just been finding joy in my own company, honestly. And I feel like I'm in a really good space right now. And it's also Ramadan which is a blessed month of spiritual cleansing and introspection and reflection. So I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. Hopefully lots of great things in store for 27. Like when I think about my parents and how at 27, like they already had me. Like I was five. I was in kindergarten when my parents were 27. And little old me, <laughs> no man, no kids, no attachments. <laughs> You know what I noticed? On our birthdays, it's never sunny. It is always gloomy. What's y'all about to watch? Is it taping? Yes, yeah. taping. Hey! Happy birthday, Cynthia! Konnichiwa! <laughs> <laughs>